Is that... Did I just sniff that yarn? I don't know about you, but I tend to have quite a lot of craft projects on the go at any one time. And that's all well and good, it's super fun, but it can be a little messy sometimes. I've recently started keeping better track of my projects, and in doing so I've kind of unearthed a little bit of an alarming trend. A few months ago I moved my project tracking into a Trello board. Obviously this is just a hobby so I try not to be too overly rigid in terms of organisation, but I am a visual person and I enjoy seeing an overview. The problem is, I also included a column for hibernating projects, and every time I go into this board to update something, I can't help but notice that it's been yet another week without making any changes to that column. If you've ever read one of my long, meandering, super self-indulgent Instagram captions, you know I've got a bit of a tendency towards self-reflection. So I took a step back, ran a bubble bath, and just spent some time thinking about why these projects had been dormant for so long. The conclusion I've come to is simple. Those projects were chosen for the wrong reasons in the first place. See, Back in the day, when I was first discovering new hobbies, I'd always try and push myself, choose projects that had a new challenge, or, to be totally honest, projects that were popular at the time so I wouldn't feel left out. I didn't really have a good understanding of what I most enjoyed making, so I just threw everything at the wall in an attempt to see what stuck. Nowadays, I do know a lot better what sort of things I enjoy, but a lot of the offenders that have been on this list for so long are relics of the before times. So I'm kind of torn between, you should finish your projects, and I don't wanna, I don't like it, I won't use it. The answer to all this is obvious, right? You might be surprised to hear how much resistance I feel to frogging these old projects, or you may be entirely sympathetic. Either way, they're serving me no purpose beyond a sort of low-key sentimentality. They need to be purged. First, I'm going to set some ground rules. I've decided to set some limits for myself on what projects can be started from now on. It won't be a numerical limit, because having a lot of projects on the go at once is super fun, but I think I need some kind of criteria for choosing projects so that I don't get so off track. So here goes. Let's just deal with cross-stitch first because it's kind of its own thing and has different rules. Cross-stitch projects are, for the most part, small, at least the ones I do. They're easy to store, everything fits in one drawer. Everything would fit in one drawer if I actually tidied it away. And I enjoy the process of stitching way more than I actually enjoy finish finishing and displaying projects. So it doesn't really matter what I'm stitching as long as I enjoy it. So if a pattern speaks to me, that should be that, and it, nothing else should matter. The one thing I am going to try and change about my outlook on stitching is that if, a, if I'm just not feeling a project, if it's no longer fun, then I need to give myself an easier time about setting it aside. There's nothing forcing me to finish projects other than a vague sense of needing something to post pictures of on the internet, and that is a real stupid reason to do anything. So that's the one rule for cross-stitch. Stitch whatever you want to stitch. Easy. Okay, now the big three offenders. Knitting, crochet, sewing. I am including sewing in here despite having only ever made one dress because I can just see it going that way. So one thing I've learned over the years is that I really enjoy making wearables. It's not the only thing I enjoy, but I do tend to gravitate towards them. I've also unfortunately learned that just because a wearable looks amazing in the cover photos does not mean it's going to look amazing on me. Given that I've spent the last couple of years trying to adopt the whole capsule wardrobe mentality, a list of criteria for wearables was actually quite straightforward to put together. Number one, easy to wear items. I want to just put on one, two at the most items and be dressed. I want comfortable clothes, I want to be able to move around and sit down and curl up in a ball in my crafting corner on the couch and not think twice. Dresses, skirts, just easy casual tops. Stay away from anything too fitted over the hips because it is not flattering on me and I will not wear it. So what is the point? Number two, necklines. Now, deep v-neck or boat neck. If it's any other neckline, it better be real compelling in other ways. Number three. In terms of colours, we've got the neutrals, black, white, grey, no beige. And then my colours are purple, green, and darkish to navy blue. 
I will allow myself the occasional mustard slash gold because I need it to go with green to make Packers related outfits. But nothing else. No red. I do not look good in red. Red is banned. Number four. Socks. Okay, I love to knit socks and nobody cares what your socks look like and this is where I can go crazy. I would love to have a whole drawer of handmade socks one day and it does not matter what they look like. I just want it to be a riot of nonsense in that sock drawer. Number five, no more shawls. No more shawls. Number six is only practical hats and scarves. I do love to make hats and scarves, but these lacy ones that I keep being drawn to, I will never wear because I'm always worried I'm going to snag them on something. It's just not for me. Number seven is a little bit controversial, but it's just for my situation. I'm going to aim for nothing that costs more than about £30 in materials maximum. Um, I will make exceptions on a case-by-case -case basis, which is true for all of these rules, but I don't want to make things that I'm then going to be too precious about to wear. If something does get damaged, that's what clothes do, you know? It happens, there is wear and tear. And I don't want to be in floods of tears because this thing that I spent £100 and the last three years of my life making is suddenly ruined. So, just, I want to be more aware of the cost and make sure it makes sense for the item and the way that I will use it. That's my seven rules. Let's see if I can stick to it. I'm obviously not going so far as to ban myself from making non-wearables. I would love, for example, to learn to sew a nice project bag, among a million other things. But this is just a guideline because I know that it is the wearable patterns that mostly catch my eye and that I will mostly cast on on a complete whim. So if we look again at the Trello board, there are 10 items in the hibernating list, but not all of them meet my criteria. So the first task was to actually find them. Did I just sniff that yarn? My 2021 thread journal. This was a beautiful dream and I signed up to do it literally about a week before it started because again, I saw photos, they were beautiful and I did not want to feel left out. It's now the beginning of July and I've so far managed to stitch about nine days into January. The idea was to learn some embroidery stitches. See what I mean about choosing projects to push myself rather than for the end result? I do think this would be lovely to finish and I've put effort into keeping a daily diary all year so that I would have something to stitch for each day. My heart is telling me to keep it, so keep it I shall. The only crochet project on this list is this teardrop pullover pattern. I chose it because I had a lot of lace yarn that needed using up and the pattern is beautiful and it does look so breezy and comfortable to wear. But on the other hand, it's very lacy and will I avoid wearing it for fear of snagging? Plus, I only ever got this far, so I'm obviously not super into it. And you are out of here. Smaug socks. These were... Well, I should say this because I only ever got halfway through the first sock. Um, this was hibernated last summer and I just wanted to stitch something easier so I went with some vanilla socks instead. These ones right here. Given my enthusiasm for socks, I think I should probably keep those and get back on the horse. They can stay. The next two projects are stitch alongs from the enablers group on Facebook. They've been in these bags for probably a year and I have no idea what state they're in so let's find out. This temperature sal was so pretty and I really enjoyed it. However, I only ever got as far as about March 2020. So is there really much point finishing this now? I think we all know the answer is no. 
In fact, so little of this got done, I could probably get real frugal with it and repurpose the air if I really wanted to. It does look like I stopped at a nice square point, so maybe I just frame that little square and call it done. Let's see where we are with the second one. This was the office stitch along. It was actually the reason that I joined the group in the first place, although since I'm not the world's biggest fan of the office, the logic of that kind of escapes me now. It did help me meet a lot of new people on Instagram though, so I'm very grateful to it for that, even if I gave up quite early on, as soon as I encountered metallic floss. If you've used it, you know. Regardless, this was forever ago. It's a project I wasn't enjoying that much. It's out of here. That leaves Garden Cat as my last cross-stitch hibernator, and I am excited to see where this is. It's actually the first pattern I ever bought for myself after just learning to cross-stitch, and I hardly had any floss collection at all, so I was just kind of substituting random colours and making up my own blends, and I'm just really intrigued to see what that was like. Wow, I hardly got anything done on this, it turns out. But you know what? My colour choices were not half bad. There's some really questionable blends in the sun there, which nowadays I probably have the cold four shades, so I might need to revisit this and kind of see what the situation is. Maybe some kind of project restoration is in order there. We'll keep that one. Find your fade. Say it with me now. No more shawls. I've been steadily knitting on this and pretty much hating it for most of the last year. And you might know I recently discovered the next colour I was going to add is the completely wrong yarn weight, so it's been in the naughty corner. I know it's a popular pattern, but I will never wear this. It is a waste of good yarn. It is getting frogged. Back in your bag you go. Onto the frogging pile. Smooth. This three quarter or so complete sock head cowl, also a very easy decision. I imagine the camera isn't picking it up great because it is a plain black stockinette fingering weight cowl and it is as exciting to make as that sounds. However, this was specially requested as a gift and it was requested so long ago that if I actually finish it now, he will have forgotten and it will be a wonderful surprise. So this stays and I will finish it. This green scarf, man, I was so excited for this scarf, but it was perhaps the biggest inspiration for this rethink, so you can kind of guess which way the wind is blowing there. Look at these cover picks. Who would not want to look like that? But in reality, it's working up too small, it's kind of lacy, which disobeys rule six, and there's only one time I can think of where I've had called to dress up as a steampunk mistress, so this is never going to be an everyday item of wear. Plus the yarn is really nice, and I have more of it, and I can definitely use it for something better than this. So, frogging. This is my Urban Houndstooth cardigan. It has been off and on the needles since about 2014. And it even travelled across the USA with us on a month-long road trip where I completely failed to get any meaningful progress done because we were too busy spotting license plates instead. I seem to recall I was working with the wrong weight of yarn, but I'd mathsed it out and discovered that I could knit a different size and the dimensions would work out to be correct. That sounds very sketchy, so I'm kind of intrigued to revisit that reasoning and see if it holds up. Uh, past me, maybe didn't quite know what she was doing there. If it can be saved, though, it will be saved. That would be great. Um, this stays pending further investigation. Now, apparently when I set up this Trello board, some projects had been hibernating for so long that I literally just forgot they existed and never added them. While I was ferreting around yesterday, I found three extra mini projects. Two of them are pairs of fingerless mitts. These orangey ones, which do not look like much, I admit, these were knitted very early on. Like, I think I'd been knitting for about a month and I won some hand-dyed yarn from a Google Plus group, so that kind of dates that whole situation. These were never finished because I ran into the roadblock of needing a button, and I guess they were just put in a bag and now it's like seven years later. I have no real attachment to these and maybe the yarn can be rescued and used for something else. That would be nice since it is special to me because it I won it, it came all the way from America, I was so excited at the time. I hadn't knitted with anything other than acrylic, 
So yeah, I would really like to rescue that yarn. That's another for the frogging pile. I also found the beginnings of Morfingless mitts. This was yarn that we picked up from Portland, I'm pretty sure, um, Portland, Oregon, on the aforementioned USA trip. I honestly have no idea what I was planning to make here. I don't think it was following a pattern. Maybe I was trying to design something. It's lost to the mists of time. But regardless, this is really nice yarn that I totally forgot I had, and I will be rescuing that. Definitely. This very last item is, is not going to show up on camera. It looks like nothing. This was the beginnings of a shawl. I think it was called Midnight Sun, the pattern. The, uh, the lace weight yarn was a gift and I was super excited to make it. But as we've seen, shawls? No. Lace? No. It's no wonder I've never gone back to this. This was actually, I think it was my third false start because I kept making mistakes because it was so early on. This was my first attempt at double-sided lace and it was just like too much. I have a lot of purple lace weight yarn, so I should definitely rescue that and see if there's something else I can make with it. Suggestions? Welcome. So there we have it, a nicely organized project list. Isn't it a thing of beauty? There's just one thing left to do and I need to take a moment to compose myself before doing it, so cue camera change. <laughs> gonna lie that was not easy but it does feel good. Now all the projects on my Trello board are projects that I'm excited to work on and as a bonus look at all of this new yarn. And that's not to mention the second skein of the green which has been sitting there for years unable to be used for anything else. All of the other colours that I intended to add to my fade shawl and this big bag of lace weight yarn. I think being a bit more intentional with my choice of project is going to be a bit of a game changer. Having the confidence to know what you'll enjoy making and what you'll make use of is something that only comes with practice. So I'd love to know, are you there yet? Do you maybe have a pile of shame like mine and 
is it possible that the reasons might be similar? Maybe we need a hashtag intentional crafting challenge. You leave that one with me. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for sticking with me. Let me know what you think in the comments and remember, keep making cool stuff. Bye.